let's talk a little bit about some new Qualcomm updates on the AI100. Did I say AI or IA? It's an AI100 Ultra card, Pat. What's going on? Yeah, so uh, most of you know Qualcomm as a technology provider uh, for smartphones. And then what we've learned, uh, if you've been paying attention, is they've been increasing uh, their portfolio in areas like automotive, where they have a $30 billion uh, backlog. And it's the first time uh, last quarter that uh, it actually made a highlight reel, right? That the business was big enough that said it, that, that it helped uh, the business. Uh, also into PCs and also expanding into IoT. But uh, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, Qualcomm is leveraging their very scalable uh, AI blocks uh, that, that they use in a lot of different implementations into the data center or the data center edge. Uh, first, we saw the Qualcomm A, uh, AI100, and that's currently uh, inside of AWS and not just for automotive customers like BMW, who are going with uh, uh, Qualcomm solutions for their cars for self-driving and safety, uh, but also uh, open for anybody who would, would want to use them. And as you would expect, uh, the solution is very um, efficient, right? In terms of uh, what it can do, uh, you know, for, for lack of a better term, uh, tops per watt. I think a, a lot of people are wondering like, hey, you know, are they going to keep this going? Uh, well, here we go. Uh, a couple days ago, they dropped the A100 Ultra that uh, cranks out even uh, more uh, performance, you know, trillion uh, parameter uh, models here, which is just uh, shocking. And, uh, excuse me, 100 billion parameter model on 150 watt card. Uh, the crazy part uh, about this was it, it was more than kind of dog with, dog with a note here, if any of you speak uh, French out there. But, this has actually showed up with two customers. The first one is HPE, right? And the second one is Cerberus. So Cerberus, everybody knows HPE, very successful uh, on the edge, very successful in high performance computing, and they are offering a, an AI training as a service, which I'm still waiting details on uh, pricing and, and, and GA. They had acquired a company called Cray, uh, who is a leader in highest performance uh, supercomputed. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, afterwards. And then um, uh, Cerberus is this wafer scale. Uh, literally, the uh, size of the chip is nearly the size of a wafer. And they don't just sell the chip, they sell the entire system. Uh, that company has seen a lot of uh, activity and interest uh, from... Uh, U.S. Um, departments of, of XYZ. And you see the success that H, uh, HPE has in those same, just, you know, cloud, maybe the, mili uh, the U.S. military. Uh, and you combine the trust that a company like Qualcomm has on the inference side, it, it totally makes sense, right? HPE has already determined what they want to use for training. Uh, they didn't talk about uh, what they're they're using for inference. I'm waiting more details. For instance, is this is this the data center edge, right? We're going to see this uh, at Tesla or or something like that. Uh, it's it's a lot clearer cut for Cerberus, who doesn't have an inference capability. They're more of a training, and now Cerberus can come in with an end to end solution, uh, leveraging uh, Qualcomm. And I'm super interested to see about what the future holds. Uh, of this business unit. Yeah, Pat, this is really interesting. You know, for lack of a better word, it's a very, uh, this is not the part of the market that people think about Qualcomm, but it's a really useful piece of hardware based on my first assessment. Now, again, I'm reading over what, you know, uh, Justin Hotard is saying at, 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 at HPE. I'm looking at the Cerebrus commentary. You're talking about a very low power, very, uh, very uh, power, low power consumption, but powerful accelerator for these AI workloads. And it really looks like um, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of wedging their way into the cloud. 
Uh, they're wedging their way onto the prem data centers. They're wedging their way into the hyperscale cloud potentially here to be offering, um, to putting their, you know, kind of the way ARM is, you know, squeaked its way into the PC and how lower power has found its way, you know, could this lower power trend and what Qualcomm has sort of its, it has a quite a pedigree in this particular space be the beginning of a new business unit for the company. And it's, it, it sounds like that's the direction it's going now. You know, it's early days here, uh, but, you know, from generation to generation, you're seeing some really good improvements. You're talking about what it looks like something, you know, it's, it's a pretty significant order of magnitude over that original uh, Edge 100 that they had put out. It's starting to look quite compelling. They're finding OEM partners now. They're, you're hearing from cloud companies that are building as well as accelerator companies like, uh, you know, and you're, what you're seeing here from Cerebrus that are basically saying, like, we can partner with Qualcomm here and get the types of gains we need. Um, you know, it, it is early for me. Uh, I've got I, I to get a briefing to be candid, to learn a little bit more about this. But Pat, this could be the next IoT business for Qualcomm. This could be the next sort of where's the next big growth come from. And, and you gotta say, it would make Qualcomm more attractive, you know, cause I know they're, they're kind of heads down all in on, on AI PC, but let's face it, data center, data center dollars and margins are just better. You know, so if they can really find their way in here and show that there's a demand for lower power consumption and obviously high output accelerators, this could be an interesting place. And it's exactly where Qualcomm is known to be able to play well. So uh, early days, but let's keep an eye on this, Pat, because you know what? Um, from flops to tops, it's a uh, it's an AI world. 